Coming off an 8-5 and five season just a few years ago would have been a great thing for Stanford football, but uh, after the work of Jim Harbaugh and now David Shaw, it's a bit of a down year. But, of course, they finished up very strong in 2014 and now head into the offseason with one thing in mind, bringing more talent uh, to the Pac-12 program. So we bring in Don King of Last Word on Sports to talk some Stanford Cardinal recruiting. Don, how are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? Doing just fine. So... We know that uh, it's a different situation at Stanford than it is in many parts of the country still because of the work of the two coaches we've mentioned. Uh, Stanford's been one of the elite uh, programs here in the last five or six years. So let's start out with the needs of this particular football team considering who they're losing and maybe where they had some depth issues before. Sure. Um, it, it's fascinating and it's a little bit unusual uh, in that I don't know that we've seen a transition quite like this one uh, in Stanford's recent history. So literally the last player who had gotten any action under Jim Harbaugh has now exhausted his eligibility. So, you know, it's David Shaw's squad lock, stock, and barrel now, you know, 100%. All of, all of his recruits, all of the guys he's been working to develop over the last four seasons will be the folks who will be front and center. Uh, biggest need was not necessarily one of those weak areas from last season, uh, but the entire defensive line essentially takes off. All of those starters, you know, uh, have finished their eligibility and now are training and trying to get ready for the combine and hopefully a professional future. So there are a lot of holes to plug up front. Um, and there are some guys who, who got a little bit of a chance to get their feet wet last year. Um, you know, Harrison Phillips, the true freshman, got some reps at defensive end. He was expected to redshirt, but with some of the injuries, was pressed into service early. Uh, that'll serve him well going forward. He at least got a chance to get to get some playing in. Um, but, the, but the real key is to, to kind of reload that defensive line. And, and one of the hallmarks of uh, the program recently and you know, the success in beating teams like Oregon, uh, which Florida State struggled with, Ohio State not so much, uh, was having a lot of fresh bodies on defense, particularly on the defensive front, uh, to be able to cycle in to kind of keep fresh legs and to track down those guys uh, who run that blur offense. So <clears throat> one of the key targets who's not yet committed is a, a defensive tackle named Ross Donnelly. Um, and, and getting him is going to be something that's going to be really helpful, perhaps not in 2015, but for the longer-term future. Um, he's a fairly highly regarded guy, you know, one of those, those last five that have yet to commit that Stanford's chasing uh, pretty heavily. Uh, getting him would go a long way toward helping solidify things uh, on the defensive front. All right, let's look at uh, the unique challenges of the Stanford situation. Um, Harbaugh uh, met that challenge. David Shaw continues to meet that challenge and maybe embrace that challenge. Uh, do, do you see anything particular in what David Shaw has been doing over the past four years? And, and you mentioned now it's completely his football team that maybe is a little unique from his predecessors. Yeah, I, I don't know that it's completely different. Uh, and, and this is a good point for me to segue. Uh, Shaw's two biggest recruiting victories of this offseason – have already happened, um, and it has nothing to do with the on-field personnel. It has to do with his staff. You know, he successfully beat back his old boss, uh, Jim Harbaugh, who tried to pick off Shannon Turley, the nationally renowned strength and uh, uh, strength uh, coordinator, um, and, and kept him on the farm, along with, even more importantly in my estimation, well, maybe not more importantly, about the same, because Turley has been critical uh, in the success that Stanford's enjoyed over the past five years. Uh, and he originally came with Harbaugh from San Diego. Um, but keeping Lance Anderson was a huge deal as well, because Anderson serves as both the defensive coordinator on, on Stanford's number two ranked scoring defense in, in 2014, as well as the recruiting coordinator, which is a critical position in terms of working with the Stanford admissions office uh, working with the recruits themselves from the time they're identified, perhaps as sophomores, you know, making sure that they're they're working on the right classes, their transcripts are solid already, their test scores are where they need to be, because uh, gaining admission is a big deal. Um, and and uh, there has been some news even within the last week or so of uh, of a recent uh, Stanford decommit, 
and uh, late in the cycle decommits for Stanford football of, of long-standing verbal commitments typically means there was some kind of hiccup in the in the admissions process. Um, so you, you know, keeping Anderson was huge, uh, both from a defensive coaching standpoint and also from from that uh, continuity in the recruiting process standpoint. Uh, he, he's been critical toward uh, keeping the pipeline at least moderately full of, of uh, scholarship athletes who were able to gain admission. Um, so losing him would have been devastating. Um, Turley has just kept everybody healthy to an outrageously, um, uh, an outrageously strong degree, uh, which is something that a lot of programs nationally struggle with. So there's an angle to the recruiting uh, that we would not have picked up on. So uh, David Shaw is able to keep uh, his staff intact. Yes. Uh, uh, everybody runs to the recruiting rankings, Don, and we will as well, although they are a bit overrated, but it gives us yes. something to start with. Uh, all you have to do is go back four or five years. I do this from time to time. Look at the recruiting rankings. Look at the player rankings and see, yeah, superstar, 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 even look at your top 20 players, and you're going to find a handful of players that, yeah, they turned out to be decent players. They contribute, and then you're going to see some guys that you're going to be like, where did that guy vanish to? I never heard of him. Um, exactly. So I think as a composite, uh, they definitely mean something from player to player. Hey, it depends on the system, depends on the desire of the player, their willingness to, to buy in and learn and compete. But let's, uh, let's go to this ESPN 300. You've got uh, three players at this point that are committed. It's a 38th ranked class. So let me throw three names at you and get your, your feedback on these guys. We've got uh, wide receiver Trent Irwin out of California. ESPN has him rated as the 18th uh, wide receiver. Uh, we've got a safety in Ben Edwards out of Jacksonville, Florida. He's a 13th rated safety in the country, according to ESPN, and also a guard in Nick Wilson out of Georgia. Yep. who uh, you have a certain connection to, who's uh, currently the 16th rated guard and number 232 overall. That's right. Yeah, so we'll, we'll take them in order. I've, I've seen, and obviously I follow Twitter like everybody else, all other eager, anxious alums and fans, and you want to get a feel for who these guys are and how they stack up. And, uh, and, and, and essentially it's not that hard to figure because you can follow how excited the coaching staff is when, when they get a verbal commitment from – from a certain player, and and you know, candidly, that's almost as helpful as, as looking at the recruiting service ratings, right? You know, uh, one of the things that Harbaugh did that I think Shaw has continued is being much more concerned about fit within the program, uh, desire, character, ability to grow and develop, uh, and and there's been a much greater emphasis on that that fit and uh, from a mindset standpoint and an ability to, to learn and development standpoint and develop standpoint uh, as well as the the three the star rating system you know uh, Ben Gardner comes to mind the former defensive end who's, who's now a Dallas Cowboy who if I remember correctly was a two-star kind of guy um, out of Wisconsin and, and only because uh, you know his coach knew Harbaugh's dad and managed to get it tape in his hand was he even offered uh, and, and you'll remember him having a fantastic Rose Bowl and helping Stanford beat Wisconsin who did not recruit him out of its own backyard so that had to be kind of sweet for him. Um, back to the guys that you mentioned, uh, Irwin looks like a, a budding superstar, um, wide receiver, supposedly good hands, explosive and great speed, you know, kind of reminiscent, might be this year's version of Christian McCaffrey. Um, sounds like he may have a shot to come in and contribute right away. Um, he's he's the highest rated of the current commits that Stanford's got. I've seen him four, four stars on some services, five stars on others. Um, looks to be a legit, uh, you know, budding superstar type player. Now we'll have to see how he comes in and learns the system and develops. Just to your point, you know, they don't all pan out. Um, but this kid looks pretty close to can't miss. Uh, and I know the coaching staff was thrilled to get him and. No, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do uh, during camp and, and next fall and, and seeing if, if he can reach the field. Um, ben Edwards is another great get. Um, if I remember correctly, um, I'm trying to remember where he's from. I think he's a Georgia kid as well. I want to say Gwinnett County. Got him um, up in Jacksonville, I believe. Okay, I may have that wrong then. Uh, Jacksonville, Florida then. Um, but... I will say safety is a, a, a position of acute need. Um, over the past two seasons, we've lost two all-conference 
level performers. Um, you know, so Ed Reynolds is now with the Philadelphia Eagles. He's graduated the, to the NFL. Uh, team captain and 2014 All Pac-12 selection. Um, Jordan Richards will take that next step. He's playing in the Senior Bowl coming up, and and he hopes to, and I I believe should have an NFL future awaiting him. So Edwards is critical. Um, you know, he's he's a DB, and I think he has the flexibility to perhaps play corner or safety. But I think he's being looked at as a as a safety. There are a couple of guys coming up who who switch from the offensive side of the ball, um, who got some time this past season at safety and and have been promising and and will probably start. But from a depth uh, standpoint, we're going to need Ben Edwards uh, to come in and make some noise. And one of those other targets that's not yet committed that I referred to earlier is a guy named Frank uh, Buncombe, Frank Buncombe the Fourth out of San Diego. So he's considering Stanford uh, and also Notre Dame, Vanderbilt, and Cal. From what I've been reading, um, that would be a great get. Uh, I don't, I don't think uh, you know the the strong quarterbacks and and air offensive attacks in the Pac-12 are going away anytime soon. So we could we could stand to restock that secondary. So we've got Edwards. If we could add Buncombe to that and get both of them admitted and get both of them you know, into Shannon Turley's strength program and getting ready to contribute on the field, that would be fantastic. So yeah, it comes down to these last 16 days, and those guys on the fringe uh, could go either way in regards That's to, uh, and that could make for a marginal class or it could make for a really good class. So you mentioned the recruiting rankings. We discussed them. I don't want to dive into them too heavily because I think they should be less of an emphasis overall, but specifically to this program. So if you're sitting in the SEC in Athens, Georgia, or Tuscaloosa, Alabama, or in Columbus, Ohio, you look at those recruiting rankings, and if you're like 13 or 14, you're, you're going nuts and think uh, the coaching staff needs to be uh, shown the door. But if you're sitting in Stanford, it's been proven out over the last six or seven years, those recruiting rankings don't mean a whole lot. So what's going to have to happen on National Signing Day that's going to make you pretty pleased with this class, Don? Yeah, I already feel solid about it. You know, 14 is, is a tiny class uh, relative to most of these other big powerhouse programs in the SEC or the Big Ten or the Big 12 of late. Um, so it's not large at all. Uh, I, I am hoping, and, and I don't know the number of scholarships available, but i got to believe it's more than 14, given some of the folks rotating out of the program, uh, including a couple of walk-ons who earn scholarships. So you know, I expect probably there need to be two or three solid to strong additions for folks to really say, okay, great, this is what we need. And, and we talked about Donnelly. We could use some more D-line D help. Uh, Buncombe would be a great get to bolster the depth and def the defensive secondary. I understand there's a running back named Bryce Love out there that we'd like to add to the class. We've got a commitment from a kid named Cameron Scarlett in Oregon who's, who's well thought of. Um, I understand that, that Love is, is well regarded by the services as well. Um, yeah, and, and as we've seen, um, you, you can't really have too many running backs. Uh, you know, I, I, I'll bet Mark Richt was awfully glad he had Nick Chubb, uh, you know, sitting uh, at, available and at his disposal uh, when he lost one of the best running backs in the nation and then didn't lose a beat going forward. So, you know, the, the data would say that uh, having a couple of decent backs is, is probably not going to be good enough. You're going ha to need to have three or four or more. So I think running, a back, running back is another area that uh, where Stanford could, could stand to, to bolster his class a little bit as well. Don King joins us from uh, Last Word on Sports, uh, talking some Stanford recruiting. On a side note, Don, I will let you know that uh, you alerted me to Christian McCaffrey, and I caught him in the bowl game, and that boy is quick. He's electric, man. That kid's got wheels. I'll tell you, he's he is so much fun to watch. And and you know everybody knows that his dad is is Ed McCaffrey, the Stanford grad, and the you know the former NFLer who won a couple of Super Bowls with the Broncos. I will tell you, his hands are about as good as his dad's. But I, I think he got his speed from his mom Lisa, who was a former varsity soccer player at Stanford. Uh, which is where his folks got together. I, I think Christian is faster than Ed ever hoped he might have been. Uh, that kid can run. Um, and, and I think uh, you're going to see him have a very significant role uh, next year in Stanford's offense. I, 
I think you'll you'll get uh, you'll get more Ramon Wright as kind of the the short yardage thunder back, but you'll see a lot of Christian McCaffrey in in that lightning role, and then a little bit of uh, Barry Sanders Jr. sprinkled in as well. So I think running back for next season uh, from his, is relatively well stocked for Stanford. You know, the question is the future. You know, after those guys start to to rotate out and exhaust their eligibility, then what? Uh, and that's why I think running back is is going to be a, a a fairly key position for recruiting this year. Yeah, if McCaffrey can accomplish what his dad accomplished, that would be a great thing. But he's going to do it in a much uh, quicker way. There's no yeah, question about that. Uh, his dad was the swiftest one out there. He just nah, was doing. He was just smart and had great hands. And you know, his dad was uh, was a, a fantastic football player. So, in no means am I trying to diminish uh, what he accomplished. And you may or may not know I'm a big Broncos fan, so I have lots of fond memories of, of him both at the college and the pro levels. Uh, but uh, McCaffrey has a chance to be special. Uh, that kid, you, you may see him in, in New York City at the end of a season, you know, one time, you know, coming up here in the next couple of years. He's, he's phenomenal. I appreciate the early tip on him, so I'll be keeping an eye out. And, again, I caught him in the bowl game. He got the ball a few times, and, yeah, he was on that edge in a hurry. Yeah. Don King, uh, last word on sports, uh, Stanford recruiting, National Signing Day coming up. Uh, Don, we always appreciate the insight and the information. Thanks a lot, Mark. I really appreciate it. You have a great day.